Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. WNBA is dropping awards today, right before the playoffs begin. A little bit different than what the NBA does, as they actually make them wait more than two days from the end of the season. But the WNBA wastes no time. They name Asia Wilson unanimous MVP of the league this year, the second time in WNBA history. The only other time that has been done is by Cynthia Cooper since 1997. Congratulations to Asia Wilson. She earned WNBA WNBA MVP. Now, the video that we're doing here is in large part about Caitlin Clark, of course, as Caitlin Clark was named the WNBA Rookie of the Year unanimously. So for all of you individuals who kept on jumping on saying someone else was the rookie of the year, someone else was better, someone else was this, someone else was that. Well, how about them apples? How about them apples? Caitlin Clark had an absolutely dominant season. And not just in the second half of the season, she had a dominant season all season. She was doing things all season that no one else in the history of the WNBA has done. In fact, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, she did something this season that Asia Wilson in her unanimous MVP season did not do. Caitlin Clark became the first WNBA player to average 15 points, five assists, and five rebounds per game for a season. She finished with 19.2 points, 8.4 assists, and 5.7 rebounds for the 2024 WNBA season. Finished seventh in the league in scoring, first in assists, top 20 in rebounds, top 20 in steals, top 20 in blocks, number one amongst guards in rebounding, top Rebounding rookie besides Angel uh, for guards. For guards. Um, Was she also top rookie rebounder, period, besides Angel Reese? Let me check real fast. But But an outstanding season by Caitlin Clark. A dominant season by Caitlin Clark. Her second half was otherworldly. 24 points, eight and a half assists, five and a half rebounds. <clears throat> shot over four by shot about 43%, shot about 36% from three. Just flat out sensational. And yet there were people that were still saying she's not that good. In fact, I did a post on uh Instagram yesterday where I did a voiceover on, on, on an image and I had people responding. Oh, she played some good games. She played some good games. Like this is the type of response you get to to Flat out, absolute stupidity. Let me read you some of these quotes. This is the type of ungod, uh, un, unfiltered hatred. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Mitch Kelsey Mitchell is the best player on the Fevers team. This is about the image that 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 um, the WNBA posted. Mitchell's the best player on the Fever team. Why should Clark be on that image? Just because she's snowflake white. Mitchell's been the best player for this year for the team. But this is by some guy named Andrew Feldhaig, a white dude who is trying so hard to be down. In fact, he goes out of his way to say. <clears throat> that Mitchell is the best player on the team. He says, I'll make you famous, Andrew. In fact, I'll tag you on it so you can so people like you can be exposed for the absolute insanity that you speak. He says, You will find out next year when Mitchell dips out in free agency. Newsflash, Andrew, she ain't going anywhere. She's living a dream, getting wide open shots, playing with the best passer in basketball. She's easily the best offensive player, shooting almost 50% from the field. She's lights out, and she hits timely big shots, not just chucking up 30-foot shots. 
Plus a shitload less turnovers. She doesn't handle the ball. Stupid. The Fever lose her. They will be back to ground zero trying to make the playoffs again last year. I disagree. I, I like Kelsey Mitchell. I'd like her to stick around. I think they're going to be better and better as a unit. But if she's if she leaves, she's replaceable. Caitlin Clark's not replaceable, buddy. I know way more about basketball than both of you on this fake podcast. You should take notes. It will improve your content. You can speak actual facts, not just ride Clark's junk and throw hate at big, mean black players like a woman would do. Now, let me give you some perspective of this guy, Andrew Feldhake. He is a white dude who clearly dates black women. Um, he has a child here, it looks like, who's black, who's mixed. Newsflash, Andrew, my wife is black. Nick is black. Donald's black. Our, literally two-thirds of our podcasts are black men. I'm married to a black woman. My children are mixed black and white, so they're black. Stop it, dude. You just found you and he has no post. Let me put him, let me put him out here for you. Andrew Feldhake with his zero posts, 12 followers, 100. He literally created this crap probably to respond to us. <clears throat> I've noticed that lots of people do that. They create these troll accounts. Um, let's see what else. Let's see what else this clown said. Nick replied, okay, we say foolishness on this Sunday. We say foolishness on this Sunday morning. I replied to him, you sound silly. Do tell so. What defines the best player to you? My goodness, this is some of the most ridiculous crap I've heard. Go hang out with Cheryl. So that was my response to him. I, I, you know, when people say silly shit, you, you got to respond to stupidness. Um, but whatever. It, it is. It is one of those things where... Oh, here we go. This is what he said. Let's let's make him famous. Imagine being this gay to make a fake podcast just to hate on black women. Andrew, Andrew Feldhick, wherever you are, 76. Let's make you famous. Andrew Feldhick. In fact, Andrew, I'm going to Google you. I'm going to find you because I can't stand bull crap like this. I honestly cannot stand it. Let's see here. <clears throat> Oh, Andrew Feldhick. He plays for the Team Five Bulls in some. Oh, I'm sorry. He's a coach, I presume, of the Team Five. I don't know what this guy is. Oh, no. Andrew Feldhick. Oh, look at this. Oh, I found him. I found Andrew Feldhick. Andrew Feldhick lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. His LinkedIn page, Andrew Feldhick, lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm making you famous, buddy. When you want to say stuff and call someone names on my social media, buddy, I'll make everyone know who you are. In fact, <clears throat> let's take a look here. Let's see what else we can find. It looks like he coaches little kids. And because he coaches little kids, therefore, he is um, this brilliant mind of basketball. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, he's 47 years old around there. Looks like he was born in 1976. But yes, this guy is jumping on here using his real name and calling people gay on, on social media. Andrew, did you know that 80% of the WNBA is homosexual? Lesbian? So are do you think you're offending me by in saying that I'm homosexual? You're talking about a league that's 80% homosexual. And you're referring to people for an opinion and calling them gay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's beautiful. Um, yeah, made you famous, Andrew. But uh overall in this 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 situation, here's here's here is where obviously Caitlin Clark was the unanimous MV, rookie of the year. Kaylin Clark can't finish fourth in WNB, WNBA MVP voting. She's named first team all WNBA as expected. I'm actually surprised that she finished fourth. I thought she'd finish higher than that. But the old guard has still is still protecting itself. They're still doing what they're doing. I, I love Nafisa Collier's game. I don't think she's second. I think Kaitlyn Clark, by far, I, valuable to the league. It's not close. Kaitlyn Clark is the most valuable player to the league. 
Caitlin Clark is the most valuable player to her team. If you remove her from her team, this is not a 10-win team. I, I mean, it's obvious. But to finish fourth behind Bri Brianna Stewart is utterly ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Brianna Stewart finishes at 20.4 points, 8.5 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 1.7 assists. She had a good year. She had a good year. She has a great team around her. Her team is loaded. Indiana's got four players, well, three, and a role player. It's like it's not close. Caitlin Clark finishes at 19.2, 8.4 assists, and 5.7 rebounds. So across the board, she got better numbers. She impacted winning more for the Indiana Fever than Brianna Stewart impacted winning for the uh, New York Liberty. New York Liberty is loaded. The team is loaded. It's deep as hell. You could bring you you could take you could take players off of the Liberty bench and put them in the in the Fever starting lineup. That's how deep that team is. You could legitimately do that. But to finish fourth. There were 67 votes. Caitlin Clark got 54. So there are 13 voters somewhere around the WNBA who make this decision for MVP. The Rookie of the Year is done by AP, a panel of 15 AP voters. So the AP has some sense. Whoever the voters are for the WNBA to have given Angel Reese a fourth-place vote, for WNBA MVP should have their ballot and their voting privilege relinquished. Kelsey Mitchell got a third place vote for MVP, which means that Caitlin Clark did not get a third place vote on that ballot. That means that one particular voter believes like this absolute clown, Andrew Feldhake, that Kelsey Mitchell was more important to the Indiana Fever than Caitlin Clark. Again, another voter should, who should lose their credentials to vote. How can you be someone in this industry who thinks that Caitlin Clark was not better than Kelsey Mitchell and more important to her team? Kelsey Mitchell would tell you that she's more important to her team. And before we go on this <clears throat> lengthy commentary before i jump into the comment more commentary let's just pull up for a fact that uh caitlin clark finished with two more points than kelsey mitchell this year that's nothing it's but she did she finished as the leading score let's look at the fact that she I'm pretty sure, but I'm I'm not going to say 100%, but let's check real fast. Caitlin Clark averaged 14.5 shots per game. Kelsey Mitchell averaged 15.1 shots per game. So Kelsey Mitchell took more shots than Caitlin Clark. There you go. She took more shots. Caitlin Clark took more threes. Kelsey Mitchell took more shots. Kelsey Mitchell got lots of open looks. Kelsey Mitchell's an efficient score. She is. She shot 47% from the field, which was actually the best in her career by not one, but 2% better than her 2020 season. And if you go beyond that, 3% better than her the rest of her career. She's a career 42.6% score shooter from the field. She shot 46.8%. If you don't think that has to do with Caitlin Clark giving her bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket, you're living in a state of utter delusion. Caitlin Clark created more opportunity for Kelsey Mitchell than she's ever seen in her life. So why would she want to leave? If she does, then it says that she's a selfish player. But I think she got over that feeling after the first half of the season. 
because in the first half, I think she was a selfish player. Second half, I think she truly adjusted and she flourished in her role, having monster game after monster game after monster game. And she was great, absolutely great. But we have got to, I mean, for her to get a third place MVP vote, it's ridiculous. But there are 13 people who did not think that Caitlin was a top five WNBA player this year. Top five. There were. But as I was saying, at the end of the day, for 13 people to not have her ranked in the top five in the WNBA, it's hard to take anything seriously. I don't know who these voters are. But goodness gracious, Alyssa Thomas getting more, getting 17 fourth place votes. Alyssa Thomas getting two third place votes. Sabrina Ionescu got five third place votes. She got three more third place votes. I mean, she got actually, for her to get five third place votes, she got one less than Clark. Sabrina Ionescu had an absolutely dreadful second half of the season. Dreadful. I, I I just can't. You got, I mean, N- N- Agumake got votes. Ka- Ka- Copper got votes. Agumawala got votes. John Quell Jones got a couple of votes. De'Erica Hamby got a couple of votes. Dewana De- Bonner. K- Kayla McBride got an MVP vote. I, I mean, come on. It's just, Caitlin Clark got 22 fifth place votes, 26 fourth, six third. Rihanna Stewart got 52 third. I, like I said, she finishes fourth. I thought she should have finished second. And heck, I think she should have won the damn thing because I think my, our definitions of valuable are different when the reality is this is just a stats award. This is a stats award. This is a stats award. 27 and 12 is why Asia Wilson won because she finished at 22 and 12. We'd be having a different conversation right now. There would be a different conversation. But anyhow, the game starts in about 90 minutes against Connecticut. First round of the playoffs. Kaitlin Clark, unanimous rookie of the year. As I've been telling you since May, end of May, rookie of the year, unanimous. First team, all NBA, all WNBA. First team, all WNBA rookie team, obviously. Fourth in the MVP voting. That's what you call a dominant season. What are your thoughts? Give me give me your feedback in the comments. Love y'all. See you soon. We will be live tonight. Ben Daniel and I at 8:30. Live at 8:30. Ben Daniel and I talking all this stuff. Come on now. <laughs>